This video clip explains the difference between direct and indirect finance financing. In the economy, we have surplus units and we have deficit units. Deficit units are in need of funds, while surplus units have excess funds which they wish to invest. The deficit unit can then issue financial instrument, also called securities, to the surplus units. And the surplus units in return provide money to the deficit units. They provide their savings to the deficit units. These securities would all involve some kind of promise of compensation that would be paid at some stage in the future. Securities can include treasury bills, government bonds, corporate bonds, shares and bankers' acceptances as examples. Treasury bills would be issued by the government when it has a short-term deficit. When the government is experiencing a long-term deficit, it would issue government bonds. Companies can also issue corporate bonds. Companies can also issue shares. When the surplus units take up shares, they now own a part of that company that issued the shares. Companies can also issue bankers' acceptances, which is an example of a short-term security that can be issued by a deficit unit. We call this direct financing because the deficit units issue the securities directly to the surplus units and the surplus units provide money directly to the deficit units. However, there may be problems with direct financing. For example, surplus units would like to know that they'll be able to get their funds back when they need it. They need to know that it is rather liquid. While deficit units would need long-term financing, they may not be able to provide it back to the surplus unit whenever they feel that they need it. Surplus units want to limit risk. You want to be sure that you'll be able to get your savings plus a return back in the future. While deficit units, the entrepreneurs in the economy, need to engage in risky ventures. They're not always 100% sure that they are going to get their money back. The surplus units in the economy may also consist of many individual investors who want to invest small amounts of surplus funds. That's people like you and me, who have small amounts of savings which we wish to invest. While the deficit units, huge companies, may need substantial amounts to invest. In other words, these funds need to be pooled together in order to finance the deficit of, for instance, a mining company who wants to erect a new mine shaft. Asymmetric information is another problem related to direct financing. The deficit unit knows all about its own company and it's relatively sure that it's going to make a profit by investing. But the surplus unit may not know anything about the deficit unit and therefore may not want to supply its excess funds to the deficit unit. We call this asymmetric information. All parties involved does not have access to the same information. Due to these problems with direct financing, we have financial intermediaries in the economy. Financial intermediaries help to overcome the problems related to direct financing. They issue securities to the surplus units against themselves 
and the money then flows from the surplus units to the financial intermediaries. The financial intermediaries can then provide loans to the deficit units. Examples of securities that can be issued by financial intermediaries include negotiable certificates of deposit, which are issued by banks, land bank bills, which are issued by the land bank, and reserve bank debentures, which are issued by the reserve bank. All of these are issued by financial intermediaries. We call this indirect financing because there is no direct contact between the deficit unit and the surplus unit. Everything takes place via the financial intermediary. That's why it's called indirect financing.